Good to be here with you. Listen to this. Scientists have new research that burning the midnight oil can lead to your brain to eat up its connections. Oh, this is not good. Dr. Richard Jaffu is here to explain this is what's going on up here. You don't sleep and things get messed up in the head. Exactly, Charlie. So, you know, it's interesting. The researchers looked at a study and they compared two groups of mice, Charlie. They had one group that slept normally or at least got eight hours of sleep. And then they compared that to a second group of mice that actually were kept awake for five days, which simulates chronic sleep deprivation. And what they found is the two groups differed in the development of a cell called the astrocyte. Astrocyte is a cell in the brain that's responsible for rewiring, for getting rid of debris. And they found that in that second group, the group of rats that actually were kept sleep deprived for five days, there was twice the level of those cells. And so the, the thought might be that chronic sleep deprivation may be responsible for a higher level of these cells causing damage to the synapses or connections between the brain cells and therefore more likely to cause problems later in life with neurological diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's. Dr. Sheffo, we have talked about uh, what lack of sleep does dozens of times on this show and we know that millions of Americans, we have a hard time sleeping and getting enough sleep. When you talk about sleep deprivation, like how much exactly are you talking about? Is it the person that just can't sleep at night or does this have to be something that is happening all the time? Well, that's a great question, Charlie. You know, sleep deprivation, we, we know that actually even if we're deprived a normal eight hour sleep, mm -hmm. which they found in some of these mice, that there were higher levels of these cells. And so researchers don't really understand how reversible this process is. But certainly we know that with sleep deprivation, we have difficulty with attentiveness, we have difficulty, you know, fine motor tasks, memory, other activities. So that on the short term, it definitely affects us. The question is what long-term effects does it have? And that still remains to be seen. Okay, before I put this sleep uh, study to sleep, uh, how many hours should we be sleeping? Well, great question. Again, if you're an adult, at least eight hours, but if you're a young, kid or you know a teen probably 10 to 12 hours of sleep is needed for for that growing or developing <laughs> brain okay let's go to a different topic the fidget toys the kids love it it's this thing that they play with now the adults are using it but it's actually helpful right well you know fidgets are thought to be helpful as a calming <laughs> device as a common to, common calming tool uh, so it allows us to concentrate more if we're in an area like we're, you know, we're all bored at meetings sometimes, they go on for a long time, and many of us you, you know, will use like a pen, a, a clicking a ballpoint pen or, you know, a paper clip or something like that to sort of calm us. But these newer devices that you, that you see actually, these devices called spinners, we're seeing these, you know, the top 10 toys now on Amazon are these devices that you can spin and actually do uh, tasks with. But the problem with these is that they tend to prevent you from concentrating because you're now taking your eye away from someone who's teaching something and you're actually now concentrating on the fidget. And in that situation, it actually becomes a distraction. Do you think they should be banned from school, Dr. Shafu? I do think that they should be, uh, Shawley, because, you know, we know fidgets are helpful. There's been some research done at UC Davis, and they looked at fidgeting, actually not fidgets, but fidgeting, and they found that in kids that have ADHD and anxiety, and they had them perform different neurological tests, they found that when they had an ankle accelerometer to measure their actual movements, that those kids that had some movement, some activity, tended to do better on those tasks. Now, researchers don't know whether these, these sort of uh, fidgets that we can use that don't distract our eyes are helpful, and that's the next research phase, but certainly they can help, at least on a clinical level, to help us with uh, anxiety and to help us be more attentive. So they're, they're okay as long as your eye isn't distracted from the task at hand. My eyes are distracted with everything right now. I'm coughing up a storm probably because I haven't slept uh, enough. Dr. Shafu, always good to see you. Good to see you, Shelly. All right, 748. Are you ready?